This is probably the oldest style of music heard in Parramatta. Sure, it's not to everyone's taste, but the ancestors of these magpies have been making tunes like this for over 20 million years. And if you ask me, it's a bit dated. Fast forward to modern times, the Darug people turned up and changed the music game forever, making tunes and dance that were central to their lives. And they're still doing it 60,000 years later. Jasmine Seymour is a Darug woman and a descendant of Yarramundi and Maria Locke and a member of the Darug Custodian Aboriginal Corporation. She's a linguist, a Darug language activist, a songwriter, artist and teacher. Jasmine has recorded these songs in Darug language, telling stories of a traditional woman's day. This one is about water and country. There are songs about digging yams, finding eels and fish, singing lullabies, all the topics of everyday life. I wonder if she's got anything about finding a parking spot on Marsden Street. When European convicts arrived in Parramatta, they were so sick of the old folk songs, they rewrote them to reflect this new world they found themselves in. Around that time, some of Parramatta's most famous singers were women who worked at the female factory. They sung, they screamed, they were a riot, literally. So we're piling up stones for the next riot day. The song you made about the female factory is absolutely incredible. You managed to capture such a zeitgeist of that time. How did you do that? Well, we had to do a lot of research first yeah. to find out about the stories of, about the women. Research things like the slangs that they used at the time and the letters that were going about. There were a number of riots at the Parramatta Female Factory and I was just really inspired by how these women sort of taken their life in their own hands because they could have been shot. So what did you learn about Reverend Marsden and his writing and how did you incorporate that into the song? Well, Rosie was playing the guitar and she yeah. was strumming a little Irish jig. And then started sort of singing a little bit to it. And then Cleona kept throwing these words at me. What were you saying, Cleo? From Marsden's actual letters to somebody else, he talked about the shower stones. And these were the rocks that the women had gathered and they climbed up to the top of the third class building in the Parramatta Female Factory. They had planned this the night before and they pelted him. So we thought, <laughs> that's the hook right there. You could have had a whole album for every single ride. Absolutely, yeah. and we might well. <laughs> the thing about these women was they banded together and they stuck with each other. And that was some of the, the first of that workers' action in all of Australia. Why do you think music is so good at telling this story? It brings the girls to life. You know, these girls were, they were defiant, they were loud, they were sassy. We only wish that we actually had recordings of what they were singing about. We're just imagining what they were singing about. But their stories and what they were resisting um, has to be in our archives. They didn't have a voice at the time. They had the, the hopes and aspirations, I guess, of any young person. And they were being locked up and confined in awful conditions. And Cutting the hair is only one of the terrible things. And people react emotionally when they hear the songs. You know, they, they really understand what those girls were feeling like. And I think that's the power of music. We had a number of people that came up and said that the music had made them cry because they really could, they could connect in. Because it's not just words on a page, it's not just history, it's actually people. I, I like to think that they would sing along more. They'd like to be part of it. Australia's first piano came out on the First Fleet and was unloaded off the HMS Sirius in 1788. Unfortunately, Australia's first piano tuner came out several decades after. The piano made its way to the colony's most prominent woman, Elizabeth MacArthur, who learnt all sorts of classics like God Save the Queen and Foote's Minuet. Thankfully, she was spared having to learn Billy Joel's Piano Man because he wasn't born for another 155 years. They say if you creep around Elizabeth Farm here in Parramatta, you can still hear the ghostly tones of Mrs Mack's 15 minuets of fame. It's a bit flat. Hmm. 
All right, let's speed things up here. In 1792, the first pub license was granted for something called a rallying post of gaiety. Now that is an old timey way of saying place to get drunk. Farmers, poor settlers, and even convicts would gather at these new kinds of venues with old kinds of names, like the Red Cow Inn, the Bird in Hand, the Thatched House, the Rose and Crown, and the Freemasons Arms. All of these venues attracted musicians playing folk tunes, but it was a slippery slope. Playing music leads to singing, and singing leads to dancing, and soon you have explicit scenes of people having a good time at these rallying posts of gaiety. Ugh, I'm so glad we don't see that anymore. In the 20th century, music in Parramatta started to get a foothold. The Lancers Barracks Band, the Parramatta Musical Comedy Society, dancers at the Town Hall, the organ at the Roxy Theatre, the Parramatta City Band, and choirs at St Patrick's and St John's Churches. Then in the 70s and 80s, pub rock took off. Parramatta was Sydney's mosh pit and had some of the most sweaty and loud venues that played host to the biggest names in Australian music at the time. Right now, Parramatta has the most eclectic mix of music culture in Australia that includes cultures from all around the world. And the scene here is absolutely booming. India, you come from a long line of performers who have made their way in performing here in Parramatta. Tell us about your lineage. The history of performance in my family probably begins with my grandmother. Her name was Bhagi Rathina Simon. She, I suppose, was quite unusual because as a woman, she was self-taught. So she fell in love with Carnatic music, which is a form of Indian classical music, and taught herself. So she was in a village and um, heard someone playing, borrowed the instrument which we call the veena, and was kind of discovered by one of the well-known musicians in India at the time, and then became a more prolific artist, performer, advocate, feminist. She was a flamboyant, kind of no-rules kind of woman in a system that was harder for women to perform or even like learn. I think she really was a bit of a rule bender. She taught my mother, my mother taught me and my grandmother as well. Wow, how old was your grandmother when she started? I think seven or eight. She has this ethos that music wasn't for performing, it was simply to unleash the divinity within you. What's one great thing about the South Asian music scene here in Parramatta that you want everyone to see? The Riverside Theatre has actually been a real centre point for starting to showcase both local, national and international work. So I'd say keep an eye on the program at the Riverside. They have done a great job in um, elevating and surfacing. The hip hop and rap scene in Western Sydney is one of the most vibrant in the country. Acts like Slim Set. Nadine's new song, West Side, is about growing up in Parramatta, hanging out with friends at the shopping mall in 40 degree summer heat, and dreaming of a beach that's hours away from the West. I ain't even trying to act like that. Originally from New York, Dante knows is a local legend of the hip hop game. He's recently written a song about Parramatta. So what inspires him here? Dante, tell us about the hip hop scene in Parramatta. Like, what is going on in this city that makes hip hop so great here? Everything's going on in Parramatta right now. <laughs> to be honest, Parramatta, for me, has been like the best place music-wise in Sydney. Really? And, you, and like, you've made music in Brooklyn, and Florida. Why? Why is that? Because I can see the growth and I can also feel it as well here. It's very new. It's very high source of good quality music just out of Western Sydney, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like Parramatta is like the focus point for all of that. You've written a tune about Parramatta? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's called Wait. Church Street. Uh, is it just the sound of jackhammers? Oh, I mean, well, now that you say that, we might have to sample <laughs> those and get a few of those in there. <laughs> Church Street really means some more to me, landmark to lifestyle. So the song is about just its influence that it's had on my life and my career. It's just way more than I would have expected, just stepping my feet on this, pa this pavement, you know what I mean? Just always giving us a platform to just express ourselves and give us ears to listen to. Parramatta Lanes is where you go to to find the concentrated source of that Western Sydney music. Um, look, Dante, uh, there's a musical artist in Parramatta who's been busting out tunes for about 20 million years, but I think their song's about a bit dated. Oh. Uh, could I play it for you to have a listen to it? 100%, let's have a listen. His name's Magpie. 
Mm. I like to call him DJ Swoopy Boy. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm with a magpie. Yeah, he mad fly. Black and white looking like he got a suit and tie. Real tall, it's a tuxedo boy, yeah. Beak is real high, looking like the sky, yeah. Yeah, huh. yeah, I like it. I like this new collab. This is great. Yeah. We'll hear that on A1 The Show next week. Uh, why not? Why not? <laughs> we got to send him that email. I got to tell, tell my friend 24 Karat Kev. Yeah, CC him. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Maybe with a collab with Dante, the magpie can finally ditch its image as a lazy purveyor of dated squawking and become the next big thing to come out of Parramatta. Dante's Magpie Inferno. Either way, sign my Spotify up.